everyone, how's it going? It's Jewel Tolentino here. All right, so in today's video, it is going to be the unveiling of Camtasia 2021. And I'm gonna be going over some of the new features that I think are really cool. All right, so Camtasia literally just dropped 2021 version and I wait for it every year. And I'm so excited to share the new features. If you don't know, I've been using Camtasia for 10 plus years now, maybe 11 years. And every year they've just been upping their game and getting better and better and better. All right, so let's dive into the features here. First thing is transitions. So I'm noticing that a lot of the features are visual type features, features to make your production look really good. They're, they're definitely upping their game to compete with other video editing softwares. So in the transitions, previously in 2020 version, I literally only used two transition. I only used the, and I have them in my favorites, I only used the fade through black and the whip spin because I found that every other transition was kind of cheesy and very old style, very 90s, early 2000s feel. So that's why I only used the whip spin, which was really cool. That was cool when they released that for 2020. And then fade through black, which is like a seamless one. But now they released like a bunch of cool ones. I'll be doing a deep dive on each of the features following this video, so make sure that you're subscribed because I'm going to be doing a bunch more Camtasia 2021 tutorials. So some things I noticed right off the bat, action wipe, animated mosaic, that like a lot of these are all new. Barn door is the same. This bars thing here, blob one and two, those are new. This one I feel like I'm going to use. Blur zoom. I think that one's going to look really cool. All right, so I got some test footage here. So let's play around with the transition. Some of them, I'll be doing an in-depth video on them. And uh, let's play around with the blur zoom thing. That looks like it could be cool. So let's drag that down and let's play this. It's going from picture to video. Whoa. That was cool. That looked like a time travel. That, that looked really cool. And another one here, cross zoom. I'm really intrigued by these zooms because those could actually look really cool. So I'll just play this one here. Yeah, that's a cool effect. That, that'll do. Ooh, and another one here, they've got glitch effects. So I've been manually doing glitch effects. From way back, I had to download some stock footage and then try and recreate it, and it just took forever. So I'm so glad that they now have glitch effects. So let's add this on and see what that looks like. Ooh, that was cool. If you add like a cool sound effect to that as well, that could look pretty cool. And they've got another glitch effect as well. Let's try glitch two. Oh, nice. So they've got a whole bunch of new transitions, which I think is a major step up from before. Like I said, I was only using two beforehand, but now I could actually see myself using a bunch of these now. So I'm very excited to use these transitions. Next, they have this thing called motion blur, which they said was in the visual effects tab. And let me just grab some test footage here. All right, so I've got this star here that I grabbed from the media and the motion blur is only gonna work if you've got some movement going on. So I'm gonna head over to the behaviors and add a sliding effect. And I'm gonna put the sliding effect and then play it for you. And you can see like it slid in, that was cool, right? But what they're saying here is with the motion blur is they're going to give it a blur effect now. So I'm going to drag that on and then press play. And then it's giving it a little bit of a blur effect if you want to, to show a fastness, speed. And again, if you had a cool sound effect, I've got some preloaded up here. So let's do this fast swoosh. Let's add that to the sliding and the motion blur. 
So you can see that created a cool effect. So that was in visual effects motion blur. And then also in visual effects, they said corner rounding. So this one right here, and this would be more applicable to if you have video footage of yourself. So let's shrink it down a bit. So let's say you have a video here in the corner. You know how everybody was doing the circular effect, right? I pretty much do it in every single one of my tutorials now, and that made it look really cool. And so now they're doing like a corner rounding effect. So let's add this onto my footage here. And then if you scroll down to the side here, it doesn't really do much yet, but you've got to increase this and then you can see that it does some corner rounding. So you can go as intense, which makes it into an eye shape. That's interesting. And then, and that could look professional in your videos. So it would look something like that. So that could be cool. That could be another option to the circular effect that they released in the 2020 version. Next is this thing called emphasize in the audio effects. So here it is right here. We're all used to pretty much everything else here, but now they have this thing called emphasize and they were saying that it helps when you are doing like a voiceover type video with some music. So previously, if you had music in the background, you either had to really lower down the volume in your music or tweak your voice audio and like lower that down for the duration or increase it. And so let us use this an example right now. Let me grab some music real quick. Okay, so let's add some music down here on the timeline. Okay. Okay, so I've got my two audios here as if I were speaking, right? Let's enlarge this a bit here. And then I've got my music, right? And so now let's go to audio effects, add the emphasize and see what that does. So I'm gonna put it on my video and let's see what it does. Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Jewel Tolentino and welcome to the Essatino Artist YouTube channel where we talk about money, marketing, and mindset. All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you how we... That is cool. I am loving that new feature. You don't have to manually, you know, tweak each other's audio. It just does it already. So I'm loving that new feature. Thank you, Camtasia. Next, in visual effects, they have this thing called Media Mat. And here it is, Media Mat. So let's use this now. So it showed that Okay, let's say I've got something like this here. Um, let's make this really small and put it behind it. Let's remove all the effects on here. Okay, and then now let's add media mat on this star here. Now you can see that it pretty much made it see-through, but now as I enlarge this, you can see that the shape of the star is there now. So you can do this with cool text here. So let me grab some text and let's grab some text here and let's make this really big and bold. Let's grab some crazier font. All right, let's do the font Alien Encounters and let's raise this up by 500. Okay, so let's say we've got something like that. Now we'll add the media mat, which is in the visual effects here. And then put this behind it. And you can see I'm creeping through the letters now. So you can see it does a really cool effect here. Before you could do this, but it took longer and it wasn't as clean. So now they have it called media mat. Whatever shape you put on there, 
it removes it so that it becomes see-through and then whatever you put behind it will show through. So now it does like a really cool effect. This just makes it faster. I was doing this previously a different way, but this will make it a lot easier. Next here, they have some things where you can now have more flexibility with turning off and on visual and audio effects. So before you would just need to X out of it and it would delete it completely. But now they're saying you can turn it off and turn it on so it's easier for you to play around. Before I was having to click X and then click redo and then undo, but this toggle here just is basically like an on and off switch now. Another cool thing I thought that they added was the group tabs. So let's say I had a bunch of stuff here and I wanna group them. You would highlight it, right click and then group. So now, when you want to edit everything in that group, it opens up a new tab. And that is really cool because before when you would group things and you had like a lot of stuff in it, it would make it kind of annoying to have to edit it and just go through it. But now they've separated it completely. So if I make a change here, right? I make a change and then I don't want that anymore and I click X, it will be reflected in the main timeline. Whereas before it would open up a whole thing and if I had like a lot of tracks, it would just make it a little bit messier and stickier and you had to be really careful not to, you know, accidentally delete something or move it to the wrong place. So now they have segregated the group here so you can cleanly alter it without it messing up the main project. So that I think is really cool. Next, they have this thing called proxy video, which I believe helps with the footage that's really big that you can't normally play. So for me, when I was extracting footage from my GoPro or my Canon M50, sometimes the files did not play smoothly and they were so big that I actually, if I was doing vlogs, I had to edit it on a different computer because the GoPro files were so huge that it couldn't really handle it. So now they have this thing called proxy video, which will help with the editing process. So I'm gonna do it right now to this video, create proxy video. And I believe it's gonna create a lower version of it so that you can basically edit on Camtasia, but then when it renders, it will use the full HD version when it renders, but while you're editing, it uses a lower version so that you can have those high quality videos while you're editing. So I can see that as I'm doing a proxy for the video, it does take some time. So that's something to factor in. So I'm creating a proxy on this one because it's a shorter video. And this one was like a longer one. It's like an eight minute clip. So that's probably why it's taking much longer. And this one was a nine second clip. So let me just drag it down to the timeline here. So I can see that when I drag it down to the timeline that it is a lower quality of the video and you can see with the yellow dot that you know it is a proxy video which means it's a lower quality so that it will make it easier while working on your projects when you have a lot of you know HD GoPro type footage. So I'll have to play around with this and see if it actually works on my GoPro footage and on my footage from my Canon M50. But the concept is really cool and I really hope that it does live up to it. Like I said, I'm gonna be creating a bunch more tutorials. So stay tuned for that because I will be diving deeper into this proxy video. And lastly, they mentioned this thing called standalone projects, which basically means that if you accidentally delete a media or something off of your computer, then your projects won't get messed up. So previously, you know, if you have like a song and you have a picture and you have some other things, like all different kinds of, of digital assets going on, on your computer, right? And then for whatever reason, you misplace it or you delete it or something, and then you try and go back into Camtasia and then it says, so-and-so file is missing. And you're like, oh my God, where is that file? And then you realize you accidentally deleted it and it's completely gone off your computer. 
when that happened before, like that was it, that, that media was gone, and if you didn't have it, and it was used in the main part of your video, you are pretty much screwed. So now, they're saying that that will not happen anymore. And if you do accidentally delete stuff or move things or rearrange things with your media in your projects, that it's going to be okay and that you'll still be able to open it and use it as is. So that I'm extremely excited about because before I had to always, you know, remember, make sure don't delete that until that video is rendered because then it'll mess up the project file. So for the most part, those are most of the features. There's some other features for Mac that are released that aren't for Windows. They do also have this thing called 3D LUTs, which was color correction, which I'm excited for, but it is not released yet on Windows. So when that comes out, I will create a video on that. But for the most part, it's transitions, it's the motion blur, corner rounding, the emphasize audio, media mat, turning on and off visual audio effects, the new group tabs, the proxy video, and the standalone projects where you can delete stuff off your computer and it won't mess up your projects. I'm quite happy with these new features. Like I said, I've been using Camtasia since 2010 and every year I look forward to their updates, so I cannot wait to play around with them. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. If you guys want to upgrade, the link will be down in the description below to upgrade to the new 2021 version. I'll see you guys in the next tutorials. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day!